and welcome to Indus News Live from Islamabad. I'm Hira Mustafa with the top stories of this hour. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi says he has told the UAE that his country won't recognize Israel until the resolution of the Palestinian issue. Speaking to reporters a day after his visit to the UAE, the foreign minister said there is no pressure on Pakistan to recognize Israel. He clarified that neither the UAE nor Saudi Arabia has any intention of making India a replacement for Pakistan. In India, farmers are observing an indefinite relay hunger strike in protest against controversial agriculture laws. They have also decided to halt toll collection on highways in Haryana from December 25th to 27th. In Nepal, the dissolution of parliament and announcement of elections have been challenged in the country's top court. Seeking legal stay, the petitioners denounced the move as a constitutional coup. The petitioner said the Prime Minister has no prerogative to, to dissolve parliament under the constitution. World Health Organization says evidence available as of yet doesn't suggest a new strain causes more deaths for higher infection weight. However, a growing number of countries are stepping up restrictions on travel to and from the UK. Meanwhile, Pakistan has registered nearly 1,800 new cases and 62 fatalities overnight as its death toll is nearing 9,400. Global death tally from the virus is approaching 1.7 million, while the infection toll has exceeded 76.7 million. In football, Real Madrid have defeated Ibar 3-1, recording their fourth consecutive league win. Karim Benzema kept up his impressive run of form by scoring his seventh league goal and two assists to secure Real's win. The win moves Real to second place in the Spanish league to level with leaders Atletico Madrid on 29 points. Well, these were the headlines. News in detail coming after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. And now the news in detail. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi says he has told the UAE that his country won't recognize his right until the resolution of the Palestinian issue. Speaking to reporters the day after his visit to the UA, the foreign minister said there is no pressure on Pakistan to recognize Israel. He clarified that neither the UA nor Saudi Arabia has any intention of making India a replacement for Pakistan. Talking about recent revelations about information of a planned surgical strike, the foreign minister said Pakistan will give an immediate and effective response. He said India's true face has been exposed through the dossier and the damning revelations of unearthed by the EU Disinfo Lab. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia have resolved to further strengthen their strong, long-standing bilateral fraternal ties. The reaffirmation was made during a meeting between Prime Minister Imran Khan and Saudi Arabia's Ambassador Nawaf bin Said al-Maliki. The exchange of views focused on bilateral cooperation and the COVID-19 situation. Azad Jammu and Kashmir President says India is planning to strike Pakistan to divert world's attention from its crimes in occupied Kashmir. Sardar Masood Khan said, having been re rebuffed by China, India is now planning to commit aggression against Pakistan. In a series of tweets, the AJK President said the UN Security Council should warn India 
as it would aggression would not be tolerated. He maintained that no power should give a green signal to aggression. Khan also urged the UN Security Council to take notice of Indian attack on a UN vehicle along the line of control. He said the UN observer forces have no freedom to move in the occupied territory. The president went on to say that Indian stages such attacks to play up its redundancy. The president pointed out that in 2020 alone, India has committed more than 3,000 ceasefire violations. A European Union-based human rights activist has called for a lawsuit against the Indian government over its fake news network. Wormat said the EU disinfo lapse revelations caused enormous damage to Pakistan, China, EU, UN and the Indian minorities. The Indian government should be held accountable for its fake campaign. He said such campaigns depict India's jealousy over Pakistan's CPEC as it wants to isolate Pakistan with propaganda. He stressed the need for disinfecting the internet and large-scale investigations into the issue. Former Chief Minister of Indian Occupied Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti, has slammed the detention of her party leaders. In a tweet, she says Sir Taj Madni and Mansoor Hussain of the People's Democratic Party have been arbitrarily imprisoned. She said they were detained on the eve of the results of the Maiden District Development Council elections in the valley. Mufti dubbed it is as sheer lawlessness and said the police were clueless as the orders came from above. Now moving on to India, farmers are observing an indefinite relay hunger strike in protest against controversial agriculture laws. A protest leader says 11 people were fast for each day in the strike. The protesters have also decided to halt toll collection on highways in Haryana from December 25 to 27. After many rounds of failed negotiations, the government has once again approached the protesting farmers. The Agriculture Ministry Secretary has written a letter to farmer leaders asking them to choose a date for the next round of talks. Despite government assurances, the stir has been intensifying as farmers want the laws repealed. In Nepal, the dissolution of parliament and announcement of new elections have been challenged in the country's top court. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's termination of parliament raises the prospect of months of political turmoil amid the pandemic. A Supreme Court spokesperson said three petitions were in the process of being registered. Seeking legal stay, the petitioners denounced the move as a constitutional coup. They said the Prime Minister has no prerogative to dissolve parliament. Experts say if the court registers the petitions, it could take about two weeks for a decision. The president said April 30 and May 10 as days for the general election more than a year ahead of schedule on the advice of Oli's cabinet. The U.S. is prepared to react if Iran launches an attack to mark the first anniversary of the killing of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Commander of the U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth McKenzie, said this is in a statement. He said the U.S. is well prepared to defend itself and its friends and partners in the region. McKenzie added he has recently visited Iraq and Syria to meet with American officers and troops deployed in the countries. McKenzie is touring the Middle East region weeks before the anniversary of Soleimani's killing by a U.S. drone strike in Iraq. In the United States, President Donald Trump's campaign has again asked the Supreme Court to overturn election results. In a statement, Trump's lawyer Rudy Gulani said the campaign sought a reversal of three rulings by Pennsylvania State Court. Rudy Giuliani said the filing also sought an order allowing Pennsylvania's legislature to declare Trump the winner. The Trump campaign and its allies have now filed roughly 50 lawsuits alleging widespread voting fraud. The latest long shot effort comes just weeks before the Congress counts electoral votes on January 6th. Meanwhile, in a turbulent White House meeting, the U.S. president discussed new ways to overturn Biden's victory. Several media reports highlighted that the meeting considered the deployment of military and seizing election machines. In a tweet, Trump denied media reports of martial law as fake news. Senior military officials have ruled out any involvement in efforts to overturn the election results. 
U.S. lawmakers have called for a strong response to massive cyber attacks on government agencies. The Republicans and Democrats criticized President Donald Trump for downplaying the hack. In an interview, Republican Senator Mitt Romney said Russia acted with impunity. Calling the attacks extraordinarily dangerous, Romney said Trump has a blind spot about Moscow. Top Democrat Mark Warner said Russia came away with a big, big haul. He said the government was still assessing the damage. Trump has hinted at China's involvement in the breach without offering evidence. Joe Biden's incoming chief of staff, Ron Klain, has vowed that those responsible will face consequences. Now, moving on to Beijing says it firmly opposes the U.S. bill aimed to kick Chinese companies off its stocks exchanges. In a press briefing, Foreign Ministry spokesman said the bill contains discriminatory provisions against the Chinese firms. Wang Wenbin termed the move unjustified political crackdown on Beijing's enterprises listed in the U.S. He said the legislation would distort the basic market economy rules Washington always touted. Signed by U.S. President on Friday, the bill requires Chinese companies to adhere to American auditing standards. A Chinese aircraft carrier group is on its way to the South China Sea to hold drills in the disputed area. The Navy of the People's Liberation Army said the group is led by Beijing's newest carrier, the Shandong. It said the ships have smoothly passed through the sensitive and narrow Taiwan Strait. The Navy added the drills are part of normal arrangements made following annual plans. It said the Navy will continue to organize similar operations based on training needs in the future. The Shandong carrier group sailed through the Taiwan Strait just a day after a U.S. warship transited the waterway. Meanwhile, Taiwan said it sent six warships and eight aircraft to monitor the Shandong, which is accompanied by four warships. Japanese government has approved ninth consecutive rise in the country's military spending. The Ministry of Defense is set to get a record high budget of $51.7 billion for the year starting in April. Up by 1.1% from this year, the budget will fund the development of an advanced stealth fighter and long-range anti-ship missile. The planned jet fighter is expected to cost around $40 billion and be ready in the 2030s. Tokyo will spend $323 million to begin the development of a long-range anti-ship missile. The enactment of the budget is certain as Prime Minister Suga enjoys a large majority in the parliament. Suga is continuing the controversial military expansion pursued by his predecessor Shinzo Abe. More news stories coming up after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back and now moving on to China, Sinwai Nonrong has called on Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Javid Bajwa at the General Headquarters in Rawalpindi. During the meeting, the two sides discussed the regional security situation and the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Views were also exchanged on bilateral defense cooperation. The envoy appreciated Pakistan's effort for regional peace and stability. General Bajwa said the recent visit of the Chinese defense minister has bolstered bilateral ties. Several countries have banned travel to the United Kingdom after the detection of a new strain of coronavirus. Meanwhile, the U.S. has surpassed 317,000 COVID-19 deaths with over 17.8 million cases. Globally, there are nearly 1.7 million deaths and 76 million infections. More in the following report. The mutated strain of coronavirus found in southern England has caused frenzy all over the world. It has also been detected in the Netherlands, Denmark and Australia. The World Health Organization says it is in close contact with UK officials over the emergence of a new variant which could be up to 70 percent more transmissible. Meanwhile, scientists at U.S. Walter Reed Army Institute of Research are working to find out if it responds to vaccines. However, German officials claim the Pfizer-BioNTech tech vaccine will be effective against the new strain. Amid travel bans to the UK, world leaders are setting up guidelines for their citizens stranded in London.
La situazione al momento è tranquilla. The situation at the moment is quiet. At this moment, upstairs the doctors are taking swabs from the people on the flight arriving from England. As you know, there are new measures of the Italian Health Ministry and those who have stayed in the last 14 days in Britain must report it to the relevant territorial health services. Saudi Arabia has temporarily suspended all international passenger flights for a week over fears about the fast-spreading new variant. Meanwhile, over in the Americas, Chile is set to start deploying the Pfizer vaccine as early as next week. U.S. General Gustav Perna, who is in charge of distributing the vaccines, has conceded failure to deliver the initial number of doses promised to states. Meanwhile, congressional leaders have announced an agreement on a $900 billion relief package. More help is on the way. Moments ago, in consultation with our committees, the four leaders of the Senate and the House finalized an agreement. There will be another major rescue package for the American people. As our citizens continue battling this coronavirus, this holiday season, they will not be fighting alone. We've agreed to a package of nearly $900 billion. It is packed with targeted policies that help struggling Americans who've already waited entirely too long. Over in Asia, South Korea recorded its first highest daily death toll from the coronavirus within 24 hours additional fatalities. India reported over 24,000 new cases and 333 new fatalities as its death toll topped 1.4 million. Thailand has begun testing tens of thousands of people following the country's worst outbreak yet. Now moving on to Pakistan, 62 people have lost their lives to COVID-19 over the past 24 hours. This takes the country's toll to over 9,392. Health officials reported 1,792 new infections overnight. Meanwhile, more than 40,000 active COVID-19 cases have been detected in the country. The health ministry says out of 458,000 countrywide cases, more than 409,000 people have recovered. The ministry said over 204,000 cases have been detected in the Sindh province, while Punjab province has reported nearly 131,000 cases so far. Now moving on to Ethiopia, three people have been killed and five others wounded after an abandoned bomb exploded in the capital Addis Ababa. Police said the explosion in the Ledita area killed homeless people. Police said a probe is underway and the public will inform once it is completed. This follows the recently ended conflict between federal forces and regional government in the northern Tigray region. But there has been no indication that the explosion is anyhow linked to the crisis in the Tigray. Police have blamed the TPLF in several previous cases. In Nigeria, police in northwestern Katsina state has foiled an abduction attempt after a fierce gun battle. Dozens of gunmen had kidnapped more than 80 Islamic school students. Katsina police said they rescued the children in collaboration with a local self-defense group. They said the teams succeeded in dislodging the bandits and rescued all 84 kidnapped victims. Police said search teams are still calming the area to arrest the injured bandits or recover their dead bodies. This comes two days after the release of 344 schoolboys who were kidnapped in the same area on December 11th. Two of the biggest planets of the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, will form conjunction in the sky tonight. This will be the closest the planets have been since 1623. The planets will appear to be aligned so closely, they will almost seem to be one single star in the sky. In a statement, NASA said this vibrant planetary conjunction will be easily visible. The next time we get another chance like this will be on 24th August 2414. Jupiter and Saturn are in conjunction when they have the same bright ascension or celestial longitude. This astronomical event is named as a great conjunction. Pop star and creator of Pakistan's popular cartoon Burka Avenger, Harun is tackling racism with a new song. More in the following report. I suffered through ages and suffered in silence. I offered brotherhood and offered nonviolence, but you.
Last summer, the Black Lives Matter movement in the U.S. sent ripples through the world. Here in Pakistan, a pop star has launched a song inspired by the movement. Just, just let me breathe, breathe, breathe. All I need is to breathe, breathe, breathe. Harun, who uses a masked alter ego, Freddy Fiction, released Just Let Me Breathe on December 17 on YouTube. It garnered more than 200,000 views on the first day. Freddy Fiction is a new project of mine, an alter ego of sorts. And the goal of Freddy Fiction is to write pop songs with social messages, make videos and songs that can have a positive impact. And for me, it's not about entertainment for entertainment's sake. According to a statement from the producers, the song was inspired by the death of George Floyd, an African-American man who was killed during an arrest in Minneapolis after a white police officer knelt on Floyd's neck. BLM activism is mainly in the U.S. However, racism and the BLM movement is a global concern. It is a global issue. And it's so important for everybody to participate, everybody to get involved, uh, to raise your voice against racism in support of BLM. And it doesn't matter where you're from. Harun's animated TV series Burka Avenger has also been aired in Afghanistan, India and Indonesia and dubbed in various languages. Through his creation, he seeks to emphasize the importance of girls' education and equality in Pakistan. In Taiwan, a high fashion designer is leveraging the power industry to design her clothes. The designer employs upcycled wires and balls to decorate her dresses. More in the following report. Inspiration for high fashion can come from strange places. For one Taiwanese designer, it stems from upcycled old wires and bowls from the power industry. 36-year-old Wang Liling picks up discarded bits of metals and wires from Taiwan's main electricity supplier to add flair to her clothes. We thought that if we cut up these old cables, which have these thin iron wires inside, we could roll them into a shape that we could use. And then we found something, such as this one. The wires and other materials stitched onto dresses give them a futuristic feeling. The dresses were exhibited at a fashion show in Taipei where they drew a warm reception. Putting old fabric and material and merge it into new designs, everyone knows that the fashion industry is fast fashion. It is very wasteful. So how do we recreate new things with the old and using creative ideas to present them? I am very much in awe today. Taiwan put a Taipei Fashion Week in October featuring live shows, which is a testament to the island's successful efforts to control the spread of the COVID-19. Now moving on to the business stories, Pakistan says new trade markets are being explored to achieve a $26 billion exports target in next three years. Advisor to Prime Minister in Commerce and Investment, Abdul Razak Daud says Africa, North and South America are focal areas. In an interview, Daud said trade diversification will enhance the economy. He added regional trade through Gavadar will boost connectivity with Central Asian states and Afghanistan. He said the main agenda of the government is to boost exports and create employment opportunities for youth. Now moving on to post-Brexit trade talks will resume today after negotiators failed to reach an agreement over the weekend. The EU's chief Brexit negotiator Michel Barnier and his British counterpart David Frost met in Brussels on Sunday. Barnier wrote on Twitter that talks were in a crucial phase. He said both sides must have the right to control their waters. David McLister, chairman of the European Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee, said in a tweet, the Parliament will not be able to approve an agreement this year as a deal was not reached by Sunday deadline. Meanwhile, Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon said on Johnson to seek an extension to the transition period. She tweeted that Britain needs to focus on tackling a new coronavirus strain.
Pakistan cricket team's captain Babar Azam will miss the first test match against New Zealand starting on December 26th. Pakistan Cricket Board says the batting mainstay has been ruled out due to a fractured thumb. Sustaining the injury during a practice session last week, Babar was already ruled out of the three-match 2020 series. Opening batsman Imam ul Haq also fractured his left thumb during a net session. PCB said the medical staff is closely monitoring the progress of both players. Mohammad Rizwan is set to lead the green shirts in Babar's absence and would be Pakistan's 33rd test captain. In football, Real Madrid beat Ibar 3-1, recording their fourth consecutive league win. Karim Benzema kept up his impressive run of form with a seventh league goal and two assists to secure Real's win. The French forward drove Real into a lead in the sixth minute, calmly netting a chipped pass from Rodrigo. Luka Modric capitalized on the lead in the 13th minute, with Benzema beating the defender and cutting the ball back. A Lucas Vasquez goal in stoppage time sealed the win for Z Zidane's side. The win moves Real to second place in the Spanish league to level with leaders Atletico Madrid on 29 points. And now it's time to have a look at the weather update across the globe. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.